Hi, I'm Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and Innovation Master. Today I'm going to talk to you about the failure of control charts. Control charts were the bedrock of improving statistical process control. They were invented by Walter Schuart, a master statistician, during the first part of the last century. Time moves on. Let's discuss the origin. Walter Schuart introduced control charts in the 1920s. That was nearly 100 years ago. The ability of manufacturers to produce quality products has improved greatly since then. During the early part of this century, Three Sigma was considered good manufacturing performance. Today, Three Sigma performance in manufacturing is not good. The improvement of manufacturing performance is the reason that control charts have lost value. During this presentation, I assume that you know about control charts. Let's review the challenge control charts have in today's world. This is a typical control chart example. It contains an upper control limit and a lower control limit, as well as a midline. In the typical examples you'll see online, the control limits are set at plus or minus three sigma. The value that a control chart gives you is a visual representation of your process performance within the control limits. Not only can you see whether a point exceeds a control limit, you are able to look at patterns of points using WECO or Lloyd-Nelson rules. All of these assessment techniques were built around a plus or minus three sigma range. This is also the crux of the problem. The manufacturing world has moved way beyond three sigma. The challenge with control charts occurs as process capability exceeds three sigma and moves on towards four then five and even six sigma. If you look at the space between the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit, you can see where characteristics of a three sigma curve will be discernible. As process performance increases beyond three sigma, we see that the probability of a point being close to either the LSL or USL decreases. This narrowing of the distribution also distorts the WECO and Lloyd Nelson rules that quickly become unusable. At six sigma, the probability of a point exceeding the LSL or USL is negligible. A wide breadth of control chart research was done at plus or minus three sigma. Six sigma processes cannot be effectively analyzed with this technology. Let's look at another example that demonstrates the failure of control charts. The average run length is a methodology to determine the number of points needed to detect an out of control point. The ARL looks at defect distribution as being equally spaced. Also, ARL underestimates. This is because the pre-mentioned run tests, WECO and Lloyd Nelson rules, are based on a sequence of points. The ARL does not predict the number of points needed to detect one of these tests. Some things to note from this chart. The one sigma ARL is labeled not relevant. This is reasonable because ARL is not a law, but guidance. Guidance often fails at the extremes. At the other extreme, ARL fails at six sigma. The formula's calculation for the number of points to collect is 50 billion. Whether this number is exactly right or not, it demonstrates the inability to collect enough points at high sigma levels to characterize a process. Since a control chart tests a process, a change in the process would invalidate all prior data points. This is a concern even if you have a four sigma process. How likely is it that nothing would change in the process while collecting 15,000 data points? Control charts are teaching a historical solution to solve a current problem. There is a fundamental problem as your process gets more and more capable. The problem becomes finding a defect. 
With less defects or impacts of process degradation, it becomes more difficult to discern information from the sheer magnitude of data points collected. Just collecting the massive amount of data is daunting and the results may not justify the effort. Ask yourself, is it even useful to teach control charts anymore? There may be other methodologies out there that are more focused on high-performing processes. The control chart is less and less useful as manufacturing quality improves. There are a couple of solutions that could be used to monitor high-performing processes. Neither of the solutions seems as complete as the monitoring capability for Three Sigma processes. However, there is going to be a compromise just due to the physics of so many points needed. All of the high performance process monitoring solutions require constant collection of data. One plot that comes to mind is the box plot or box and whisker plot. This plot could dynamically show you the median, upper and lower quartiles, and upper and lower extremes. Another thought is to use a bar graph with narrow bars relative to the distribution and plot this bar graph over the designated distribution. Over time, the distribution will start to fill out. The best next step is to talk to a statistician. I am Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and Innovation Master.